And as Newt Gingrich said, at some point, we'll figure this out. He said this after the 22 election. We always under, Democrats always underestimated Ike. They always mm -hmm. underestimated Reagan. Now it's us. We always underestimate Biden. Yeah, well, I think that's right. And who does that remind you and me of? And that is Harry Truman in 1948. You know, the beginning of that year down to the summer, even Democrats were saying, Truman is a loser. We'd better find someone else to run for us. Is there any way we can get rid of this candidate who was in his mid-60s, which was considered very old at that time? And so Truman had a new voice when he came to the convention that summer, got up and said, I and my running mate, Alvin Barkley, are going to win this election and make those Republicans like it. And not only in that speech, but all through that fall, it was suddenly uh, not the sort of meek and polite Truman of the first several years. It was given hell, Harry. And he was saying, you know, Democrats have given, you know, help the farmers and we've given people uh, support with rent. And we've also fought for NATO. That was the year that Harry Truman signed the NATO treaty that in 2024 could not be more important than it has ever been. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and, and Willie Geist, he talked about NATO. Uh, he talked about Sweden. He talked about all the important parts of uh, all the important parts of, of, of his agenda moving forward. And time and again, it seems that he put the Speaker of the House behind him in an uncomfortable position. It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard not to cheer for freedom. Kind of hard not to, to, to cheer when somebody says we're going to stand up to Russian aggression. Kind of hard. Uh, IVF, you name it. Time and time again, Republicans were put in this terrible position of having to sit down on issues that the overwhelming majority of Americans supported. And when they, uh, when they shouted at Biden, he gave better than he got. I mean, he went after him time and again at one point going, hey, come on, wait a second. <laughs> read the bill. I know you know how to read, right? <laughs> yeah, he could not have asked for a better foil in that room last night. I mean, the things he was looking for applause on and got them on one side and not the other were things like, Putin is bad. We should be helping Ukraine. <laughs> Democracy is good. What happened on January 6th was bad. That we need to fix immigration. And there's a bill sitting in the Senate that will fix the immigration problem or at least help to fix it. They wouldn't clap for that, even as the, the cutaway to James Langford, of course, the Republican who co-authored that bill in the Senate, nodding along to President Biden and mouthing the words, that's right, as the president of the United States talked about what the bill would do. I think bigger picture, though, Joe, as we know, and we talk about on this show, Democrats, supporters even of Joe Biden, have had the live question going into this campaign, is he up to it? Is Joe Biden up to it? And he answered that resoundingly last night with his performance. And I think the texts I was getting at the beginning of the speech were, phew, like he's going to be okay, ending with, wow. I think he far exceeded expectations for people who were a little worried, frankly, about what was going to happen in that room. But you're right. He had the, the perfect opponent for him in that boxing match. You had people screaming like children while wearing MAGA hats. You had one guy screaming from the back while wearing Donald Trump's mugshot and never surrender T-shirt under his suit jacket in the well there. So Joe Biden and his team are very happy with what happened last night. And he did contrast his administration's actions with the words and actions of Donald Trump. Never called him Donald Trump, always said my predecessor. But in that way, it did have the feel of a campaign speech. My predecessor, a former Republican president, tells Putin, quote, do whatever the hell you want. That's a quote. A former president actually said that, bowing down to a Russian leader, I think it's outrageous, it's dangerous, and it's unacceptable. My predecessor and some of you here seek to bury the truth about January 6th. I will not do that. This is the moment to speak the truth and to bury the lies. Here's the simple truth. You can't love your country only when you win. My predecessor came to office determined to see Roe v. Wade overturned. He's the reason it was overturned, and he brags about it. Look at the chaos that has resulted. My predecessor failed the most basic presidential duty that he owes to American people, the duty to care. 
I think that's unforgivable. Past administrations, including my pre predecessor, including some Democrats as well in the past, failed to buy American. Not anymore. But my predecessor and many in this chamber want to take this prescription drug away by repealing the Affordable Care Act. I'm not going to let that happen. The last administration enacted a $2 trillion tax cut, overwhelmingly benefit the top in 1 percent, the very wealthy and the biggest corporation, and exploded the federal deficit. In November, my team began serious negotiation with a bipartisan group of senators. The result was a bipartisan bill with the toughest set of border security reforms we've ever seen. Oh, you don't think so? Oh, my predecessor called members of Congress in the Senate to demand they block the bill. He feels political win. He viewed it as a, would be a political win for me and a political loser for him. Predecessor is watching. Instead of paying politics and pressuring members of Congress to block the bill, join me in telling the Congress to pass it. But unlike my predecessor, I know who we are as Americans. My predecessor told the NRA he's proud he did nothing on guns when he was president. I've made sure that the most advanced American technology can't be used in China, not allowing to trade them there. Frankly, for all this tough talk on China, it never occurred to my predecessor to do any of that. Joe, you did get the sense that Speaker Johnson wished they could push into just a two shot at certain times of yeah. the president and vice president so he didn't have to react. But obviously he's shaking his head there for Donald Trump, who's watching at home to tell the boss that he's got his back. But I mean, this is a serious, not a rhetorical question. When the president talks about the bipartisan immigration reform bill led by James Lankford and they start booing it and shaking their head. What are they booing and shaking their head about? What is Speaker Johnson shaking his head about? He knows exactly what happened, which is he called for immigration reform, got it from the Senate, and now won't take it up. He's in a box, like you said. In a box, and why is he shaking his head when Joe Biden talks about January 6th being such a dark day? When he talks yeah. about the big lie, which Speaker Johnson was, again, one of the key proponents of, on the House floor, Liz Cheney wrote all about it. And, and, and how do you not exactly stand up when the President of the United States says, you want to buy American? You shake your hand at that? Buying America? Ooh, ooh la la, what a campaign <laughs> this is going to be. Uh, Jonathan Lemire, uh, I've got to say, again, we just need to keep going back to it. Joe Biden underestimated time and time again. We were having the same conversation after the State of the Union last year. People going, oh, well, maybe, maybe it's not too old. Maybe, maybe not. Same now. It'll be the same going into this fall. I mean, Democrats certainly, if there were any Democrats wavering, any Democrats concerned, last night uh, certainly had to make them feel like they're in really good shape, especially, I just love how the issues line up. Republicans are on the wrong side of history. They're on the wrong side of the polls. They're on the wrong side of decency on so many of these questions. I'm saying specifically on that front, Donald Trump. I mean, last night, game, set, match to Joe Biden.